Okay, I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, January 21st, 2020 Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The agenda was posted on the 17th of January at 12.15 p.m. Thank you, John. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Thank you. Roll call. There are 23 supervisors present. Thank you. Approval of the December 17th, 2019 journal. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I'll second that. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, please push your I or nay button. approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of appointments by the county administrator. Uh, Communications Council Todd Stange and Emergency Medical Services Council Michael Lubbert. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you Mr. Chairman. I move to concur with the appointments. Thank you Supervisor Gehring. Is there Supervisor Obler. I'll support that motion. Thank you Supervisor Obler. Any uh, questions or comments? Seeing none, please push your I or nay button. Keith. Those appointments are approved unanimously. Presentations. We have none. Public addresses. There are none. Letters and communications and announcements. We have a few resolutions. Uh, two resolutions, one from Outagamie and Washera County Boards of Supervisors in support of revising and amending statutes related to court fees and costs in probate and juvenile court. We'll receive that for information as we received it two other times. I have a resolution from Outagamie Board regarding Medicaid coverage in an Institute for Mental Disease. We'll refer that to the Health and Human Services Committee. Next, I have another resolution from Outagamie County Board regarding supporting pending legislation on sexual misconduct with elderlies. We'll refer that to the Law Committee. And finally, resolutions from St. Croix and Trempeleau County regarding nonpartisan procedure drawing redistricting maps. We'll receive that for information as we've already dealt with that. That is all. Thank you very much, John. County Administrator's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. You know, if we didn't have the County Administrator's Report this evening, this could have been probably wound up in about 10 minutes. And who among you would like that? other than Emmett Feldner. <laughs> Tonight it's my pleasure to give a brief synopsis of the state of the county. And as I was sitting here and looking out amongst all of you, 21 of you this evening are wearing glasses, and I wish I had my cheaters with me this evening. 
I uh, prepare, as you know, each year a high end, thank you, Al, I may, I may use that. I prepare a high end state of the county each year. It is a high end synopsis, because you think about all the things that we're a part of here, all the things that we do, all the activities, programs, and services in Sheboygan County. There are so many remarkable achievements going on day after day. Uh, many of us may not even be aware of it whether it's law enforcement, health and human services, you, na you name it. A lot of good work done. But I'm going to briefly provide an overview, and hopefully you're going to hear a few things this evening that perhaps you haven't heard in a while. And if I'm speaking too quickly or skip over something, you all have this in your packet. I believe Cheryl sent this out, so you all have it available to you. So Dawn, how many employees do we have in Sheboygan County? No, that's not the kind of approach we're going to take. We have 850 employees working in over 200 program services, 19 departments. 850 employees, 19 departments administering over 200 programs and services from A to Z. Health and Human Services, the Sheriff's Department, Transportation, and Rocky Knoll are the big four. So when you're out there and about and folks ask you, well, what does county government do, they generally know about the Sheriff's Department, they generally know about Health and Human Services Department, Transportation, but after that it can fall off. Really? You own Rocky Knoll? Yes, we do. The other departments include Building Services, Clerk of Courts, Corporation Council, County Clerk, Court Commissioner, District Attorney, Finance, Human Resources, Information Technology, Medical Examiner, Planning and Conservation, Register of Deeds, Treasurer of Real Property Listing, University of Wisconsin Extension, and Veteran Services. I think one of the reasons why board members run for county board and stay is because there is just so much going on here and so many opportunities to learn and to help make good things happen. The most important policy document that you prepare is obviously the annual budget most important policy document of the $158 million operating budget, $51 million is property tax levy. The rest of that budget is comprised of state and federal dollars as well as private pay. So as you reflect on the last year, and as we know there are key initiatives ahead, but predominantly as we look at the last year, we look at our fiscal situation in particular, our fiscal track record, I think it's one that every one of us in this room are proud of. We have a fiscal track record second to none. We have an impressive track record, healthy reserves, an excellent bond rating, and although the county board approved a 2.4% increase in the property tax levy for 2020, a little higher than the norm, the tax rate went down. It went down 1.4%, but big picture, if you look at the last dozen years, the average levy increase has been 1%. So if anyone is questioning, well, do we have a fiscally conservative county board? Are we thoughtful? Are we mindful of how we're spending property taxes? You bet we are. And we have the track record to prove it. Wendy and her team in the finance department do an excellent job preparing our budget, working with all the departments, uh, providing support staff, and I'm particularly proud of Wendy and her team for five consecutive years of getting the achievement and excellence in financial reporting, which is an example of the transparency of our financial system, our approach, and the work that we do here. I'm also very proud of Rocky Knoll. I'm very proud of the fact that it's a five-star facility, one of only two in the county to have five stars. It's earned because of our good employees there, the good work that they do, the quality care that they provide. But like most nursing homes, Rocky Knoll is struggling to recruit and retain staff. As it stands today, we have about 23 to 25 open CNA positions alone. Difficult to provide quality care if you don't have the staff there to provide it. We've done some creative things through our HR department, through our health care centers at Rocky Knoll, but one that we're doing through your support in the year ahead is adding child care. And this is, this is just fantastic. We're going to be the only nursing home in the area that provides child care. So think of a, a young CNA who has young children, and where do, 
Where am I going to take my children? Am I going to take that long drive to Rocky Knoll or into the city of Sheboygan? It can be a real answer, I think, to help us recruit and retain staff. So very excited about that. That's a, a compliment to the county board taking a risk and trying something new. The other thing the county board just did is you just approved up to $2 million in enhancements at Rocky Knoll. Facility improvements. 1.6 million of that is through a state grant and a citizens participation committee that we're convening as I speak. But overall, $2 million in enhancements to that facility to make sure it continues to be a very effectively run facility and one that is attractive to people in the community to go to. Our census right now is above budget standards. We're right at about well, 133 and we budgeted 131. Good things happening there. We broke ground at the airport, U.S. Customs Facility. That was a tremendous amount of work. Tremendous amount of work in that, that $5 million project. We secured a $2.5 million state grant to get it done, and we secured a memorandum of understanding or an agreement with the Kohler Company to cover the operational costs to run that facility. Crystal Fieber, our corporation counsel, was tremendously successful in helping prepare the documents, help with the negotiations, really appreciated her work, Greg Schnell, and others. The county continues to meet our commitment to do 30 miles of overlay of road. We did that again. And what we also accomplished is our continuing beating the drum and putting pressure on the state to finally break ground on Highway 23. Chairman Tom Wagner, the board as a whole, was all over that. And that is a tremendous enhancement for our community and certainly a major safety improvement. We're improving in behavioral health, use justice, and child welfare services and programs. You recall when we started the year, our number one initiative in lobbying the state was to strive for more funds for child welfare services. And ultimately, because of our work and the work of counties across the state, we garnered almost $2 million more of financial resources to do more in the area of ch child welfare. I see Matt Stripmotter here tonight. He was a key champion in that regard. Good things happening in those areas. We're also transitioning child welfare work from the district attorney's office to the corporation council so we can get more permanency for children, another positive step in the right direction. So again, good work happening, happening there. Alternatives to incarceration was a major initiative in the last year. You supported building into the five-year capital plan a $21 million addition to a detention center. And my bet is every one of you that voted for that really didn't want to. I don't think there's a lot of desire to put $21 million of taxpayer money into bricks and mortar on a, to a detention center. And even if we accomplish that, which we could, state law allows us to do so, how are we going to operate it? If we have to staff it, that's going to cost us nearly $2 million, and that will exceed our state-imposed caps and property tax levy. So the Alternatives to Incarceration Ad Hoc Committee, of which there's mem uh, board members in the room that participate on that, Elaine Bosman is our project manager, the sheriff, the health and human services director, the finance director, a lot of good people have been involved. We've been looking at other counties and their best practices. And what's our goal? Our goal ultimately is to look at alternatives to incarceration to help people get on the right path to reduce recidivism so they're not coming back, to get them the services they need, to provide the helping hand they need, and not spend $21 million plus $2 million annually to staff a new addition to the detention center. I'm passionate about it, and I trust the people on the ad hoc committee are passionate about it. The past year, we slowed the bus down and we gathered a lot of good information. In the year ahead, we need to bring it to stronger recommendations and work with the sheriff and others to, to make some things happen. Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation just celebrated its 10-year milestone. We, Sheboygan County, were one of the founding members of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. You provide $100,000 a year, as does the city of Sheboygan, to support the Economic De Development Corporation. And the private sector actually provides more funding now than the public sector does, which is good, which is how it was envisioned. 
We wanted to see less public dollars and more private dollars, and that's the direction it's going. We, Sheboygan County, provide the office space on the second floor of the county administration building. And when this fledgling organization started, there wasn't much going on in Sheboygan County with the recession, economic development. We were losing jobs to other communities and states. It's one of the reasons why we created it. And in just the last few years, it has been remarkable what's been happening in Sheboygan County, in part thanks to the support of this organization and all the good people in it. Sheboygan County, through our Planning and Conservation Department, applies for grants, brownfield grants, through the US EPA. We've acquired in the last three, four years nearly a million dollars of federal brownfield grants that allow entrepreneurs or businesses to go to a site and identify how contaminated is it? Is this worth taking a risk? A site that they might otherwise just dismiss because they don't want to take that risk. Because of our efforts, because of one of our department's efforts, that million dollars has contributed to over $100 million of economic development in Sheboygan County in just the last few years alone. That is remarkable. Projects like 1,200 new apartments and condos, new sub subdivisions have started that certainly weren't starting years ago. We weren't directly involved, but speaking of economic development, a $324 million new hospital, $130 million uh, uh, extension to the Acuity Building, $64 million to Millipore Sigma, $30 million to Master Gallery, $60 million to Johnsonville headquarters, $40 million. Tom Wagner and I were just at Rotary yesterday and we were learning about the John Michael Kohler Art Preserve. A preserve for preserving art. $40 million investment in our community. It's remarkable. Sheboygan County's tourism between 17 and 18 was the fastest growing tourism in the state. I don't know what it is through 19, but I've got to believe we're one of the leaders in the state. Good things happening here. Bus ridership. We see our friend Supervisor Ed Prochek right in front. Bus ridership in, in Sheboygan County is up 15% in the last five years. If you look at the state as a whole over the last five years, it's down 22%. Good things happening in Sheboygan County. Veteran services, they relocated to the Aging and Disability Resource Center. I don't know how many of you have had a chance to go out there. It's way out there in little old Sheboygan Falls, right? What a nice move that was for our veterans organization, the collaboration with Aging and Disability Resource Center. I've yet to hear anyone from the veterans community, veterans organizations who haven't been pleased with that change. You supported that change, you helped make that happen. So in closing, those are just 10 initiatives, accomplishments, activities going on in Sheboygan County. Just a dozen or so. Out of 19 departments, 850 employees administering over 200 programs and services. We have a lot to be proud of. I'm grateful to work for this organization. The good people I get to interact with each and every day. The thoughtful leadership of the county board. We are helping make good things happen. And if you didn't get a chance to look at that, I included, for the first time, a few accolades. Because in 2019, Sheboygan County received the Wisconsin Policy Forum Salute to Local Government Award. It's a statewide award for our approach to problem solving. An achievement of excellence in financial reporting, as I mentioned earlier. The Lake Michigan Champion of Conservation Award for the good work we've done with cleaning up the Sheboygan River Harbor and protecting one of our most beautiful assets, Lake Michigan, and the National Association of Counties Achievement Award for the Amsterdam Dunes Mitigation Bank and Preservation Area. 
some of these things we've done in the past. But folks are taking notice that you, that we, that this community is helping make good things happen. The state of the county is strong. And the primary reason for its strength is the people that work here and live here and serve on county boards and local community organizations, town boards. We make it happen. So congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for all that you do along with your team in, along with this county board. Thank you. Okay, consideration of committee reports, executive committee, ordinance number nine. Reducing airport advisory committee membership, recommendation to enact. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I move to enact. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I will second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll please push your I or nay button. Sometimes they don't click right away. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of committee reports, finance committee, ordinance number eight. Regarding amending section 4703 of the Sheboygan County Code, recommendation to enact. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption. Supervisor Damp. I approve that adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Damp. Any questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. That motion is also approved unanimously. Thank you. I'll turn the gavel over to the vice chair. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number 20 from the Finance Committee regarding carryover of unexpended 2019 appropriations to 2020. Resolution number 20 will be sent to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 21 from the Finance Committee. Regarding authorizing indefeasible right of use agreement for use of ring and fire fiber infrastructure. Resolution number 21 will be sent to the Executive Committee. Ordinances introduced. Ordinance number 10 from the Transportation Committee. Regarding establishing speed zone on County Road KK, Tana Wilson. Ordinance number 10 will be sent to the Law Committee. Final order of business is adjournment. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Please vote. We are adjourned.